Manifold has many functions for performing vector-based spatial analysis. In this exercise, we'll use topological overlay, spatial overlay, and dissolve. We'll also get comfortable copying data from Manifold to other Microsoft products. In this exercise, we want to compare the land cover map you made to a land cover map from 1968. To start off with, open up the Lesson8.map in your data directory. Here we have land use from 1968 and the land use you would have digitized, or at least the one that we've provided for you. Now the lunar drawing, or land use natural resource drawing of 1968, has smaller polygons in it. In our land use drawing, we used a 20 hectare minimum mapping unit, but lunar has many polygons that are smaller than 20 hectares. What we want to do is eliminate those, or in effect have the larger polygons gobble them up. So to do this in the query toolbar, we're selecting those polygons that are less than 20,000 square meters, or 20 hectares. And here you can see those polygons that show up. Now we're going to perform a little trick. Manifold allows us through the view and then the panes menu option to create a selection pane and store saved selections. So by hitting the Save Existing Selection button, we've now saved those selected objects. We'll refer back to them later. I'm just going to dock it in the project pane. The next step is to perform a spatial overlay. Spatial overlays are a set of methods for transferring data between objects and drawings based on their spatial extent. Under Drawing, Spatial Overlay, you'll select the Spatial Overlay option. Actually, before we do that, let's first invert the selection. Now we have all those features that are not 20,000 square meters, or less than 20,000 square meters. Now under Drawing, let's go to Saved, or Spatial Overlay. And in this case, we want our source data to be the selection, actually those objects that are greater than 20,000 square meters. We want our target to be those that are in the save selection. So in other words, we're going to take the values from those larger objects and store them in the smaller ones. Our method will be areas to neighbor areas. So those large objects are now going to update the smaller objects. You can see the other kinds of methods that Manifold allows you to perform. Take a look at the smaller polygons that are on the drawing right now. When you hit OK, notice they've now been gobbled up or they've received the attribute of the larger polygon that surrounds them. In this next step, we want to dissolve the polygons together and get rid of those smaller ones. To do this, go under Drawing, Dissolve, and the menu will come up. Here we want to dissolve the data using the LUSE underscore GEN value. So again, under Drawing, Dissolve, I'm going to select all the objects and LUSE underscore GEN. Watch what you can see the smaller lines around the polygons. And when I hit OK, you can see they disappear. So they've actually been dissolved with their neighbor polygon. Spatial overlay was a good, uh, trans good to transfer attributes from one drawing to another, but GIS has always been known for topological overlay. And Manifold supports a number of topological overlay methods under Drawing, Topological Overlay. And here it supports Union, Intersect, and Identity, and you can read more about them in the help file. So here what we're going to do is we're going to select all the objects in the Land Use 68 drawing and all the objects in the land drawing and we're going to perform a topological intersection of both drawings. And we'll save the results to a new component. And a new component has been created called LUSE 68F Drawing 2. And we open that up and it's the topological intersection between both drawings. If we double click on one of the polygons, you can see now that each polygon has the attributes of both the original drawings, the land cover and the land use gen file.
what we want to do next is determine for each of the polygons remaining after the topological overlay what the land cover was in 1968 and 1995. That is, we're interested in knowing if an area of agriculture in 1968 was still an area of agriculture in 1995, or maybe it changed to something else. To do this, we're going to issue an SQL query and create a pivot table that will show the land use in 1968 along the top and the land use in 1995 along the left axis. Here again, let's look at the table. You can see the L-U-S-E-G-E-N field. And the, for example, in my first record, it was agriculture in 1968, but the L-C field says F. That means it was forest in 1995. So we've got a change there. This means a particular piece of land that was once agriculture is now forest. I've created a, a query for you already called cross-tabulation, and this basically creates a cross-tabulated table of the land use from 1968 and the land use from 1995. When you click the exclamation point, it actually creates the new table, and here you can see the 1995 data along the left axis and the 1968 data along the top. We actually want this in a new table. This, this just created a virtual table. So I created another query called create cross tab table. And what this is doing is it's selecting everything that we just created from that cross tab query into a new table called cross tabulation. When we run the query, it asks us if we want to run an action query, which will create a new table. And we'll say yes. And here it's created the cross tabulation table. This is an actual table now, so we can start to manipulate things. So here's where the fun part begins. Under Edit, select all the fields. Here we'll say select all. The next thing we want to do is copy that. So under Edit again, select Copy. Okay, let's open up Microsoft Excel, and we're going to paste the data into Excel. So it's already been copied, so we'll just go to Paste. And here you can see along the top that represents the 1968 data while the y-axis represents the 1995 data. So what's this telling us? Well, along the diagonal, those numbers represent areas where the land cover type didn't change between 1968 and 1995. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add up the diagonal values of all the land representing the data that hasn't changed. So I'm going to just add up each individual row and column. Then I'm going to divide that by the total number of area, by the total area that is, to figure out what the actual percent change has been. Or in this case, the percent that didn't change. When I divide these two together, you'll see in our example, about 78% of the land hasn't changed between 1968 and 1995.